what's up guys fireclaw here and today we want to do a little tutorial slash commentary thing um but it's gonna be a little different from other tutorials because I don't want to just open up Photoshop and show you what I did and just show you, you know the techniques of how to use Photoshop how to use the tools which tools I use blah 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 I don't really want to do that because you know I feel like that doesn't really explain how to create a good piece of art I want to go through instead um, how by my thought process and kind of like why I'm doing what I'm doing so you guys know you know how you should be thinking when you go to open up Photoshop and you're like oh man I really need inspiration I have this render and I just don't know what to do with it and you know like you need to you know you have techniques you know techniques you guys all probably watch a lot of tutorials on YouTube so you know you know how to use the smudge tool you know or when to put C4Ds and you know what kind of signature you want to make you have techniques but you know when you don't know what exactly you want to do or which techniques to use and when do you want to use them that's what this is going to be about and so yeah but before I want to get in the tutorial before I get into the tutorial sorry I want to um just say uh first of all happy holidays everyone because uh, at least where I am or when I'm recording this it is uh it's Christmas today, so happy holidays, happy new year, all that good stuff. And uh, I figured that, you know, this is really the best time to do a tutorial because I want to give back to the community. Um, this is my gift to you guys. Uh, YouTube makes it really easy for people to share knowledge and to teach other people things. And uh, yeah, so I just want to really thank the community and give back, um, especially a lot of the places and people that have helped me out over the years that I've been doing graphic design, um, namely um, Anime Flame Forums and OneCanvas.net. Those are two great forums with great graphics communities that you can go check out. Everyone's really friendly and willing to help over there. And uh, there should be some links on the screen, links in the description, all that good stuff. And I also like to thank um, Darius from Baka Arts. Um, he does great tutorials, great stuff. Um, really fantastic and he's really inspired me and also flu designs um, he's a photo manipulator and he does photo manipulations that are just breathtaking like amazing and recently I've also um, dabbled in photo manipulation I'm sure if you've been around my channel you've seen the uh, asteroid space manipulation I did so yeah um, there should be links all over the screen right now for all these places and I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for you know all of that so yeah, let's um, jump right into it. And um, so right now on the screen, I'm going to be throwing up there. There should be four signatures that you should see up there. And these four signatures are going to be um, representing what I consider the four, well, some of the main styles of graphics design. And we're going to be talking about signatures here mainly because that's what this tutorial is about. So the four main styles that I consider the main styles of signatures are... C4D, smudge, vector, and kind of like a stock, like a manipulation style. Um, so yeah, uh, as you can see, the C4D um, style, you know, it uses those Cinema 4D renders with just kind of like abstract 3D shapes created in a program like Cinema 4D or Blender or uh, 3ds Max or I'm trying to think Maya. You can use all any 3D modeling software to create them. And so pretty much you just kind of use those, and uh, yeah. So um, also I would like to thank. Uh, I did not make all these four signatures that are up here on the screen, but if you do click on them, you can see the people who did make them. And thanks a lot for letting me use your signatures. And so go out there and show them some love, guys. Um, yeah. So the next style is um, smudge. Uh, I guess if you're familiar with Baka Arts, then I'm sure you'll know this render. He did do a really great smudge signature with that. There's a speed art. Click the signature. It'll take you to there. Um, yeah. So smudge, again, it's it's a style mainly because it's, you know, you just use the smudge tool and you smudge some colors around and you add some great lighting. And yeah. And the next style would be vector. So the vector style is kind of different. It's more like 2D and it's more drawing and more cartoonish and yeah um, so a lot of people like to do this with um, brushes or the pen tool so you know to make a 
vector style signature, you would download some brushes. They're called vector brushes. You can search Google and should be able to come up with some great ones. And it's just like shapes in the background. And a lot of people do it with the pen tool, with some brushes. And yeah, it looks really good if you can do it properly. And the last style, or what I would consider one of the main styles, is the one that I like to do the most, or which is like stock manipulation. And that's the signature that we're going to be making today. Um, I'm sure you guys have probably already seen it. It is my beauty is speed art. And it was my submission for the signature of the week on one canvas, which I miserably lost. <laughs> but yeah, um, so um, yeah, that's just uh, an overview of the main four styles. And the reason I wanted to go over this is because I want to make a point that most renderers will let you do any style you wish and that the techniques I'm going to show you today and what I'm going to talk about I'm making I'm going to be demonstrating using uh, stock manipulation style signature because that's the one I'm going to be making but these things apply to all of your signatures and what are these things you may be asking well that's what I'm about to get to those these things are what I like to call the four aspects of good graphics composition and they are depth flow color and lighting yeah I know I'm so creative I didn't actually come up with these um, this was uh, back on anime flame we made a, a thread called the graphics terminology thread and we had people contribute what they thought any newbie to graphics should know and so there are a lot of people if you go and check out the link uh, that should be pop up on the screen right now that'll take you to the graphics terminology thread there's a lot of people who added their definitions of what these things are and they added all kinds of great stuff but I just wanna I just kind of condensed these and I, I brought them down to uh, about a paragraph or so for each one and I just wanna go over what these four aspects are and why they're so important um, so f we're gonna start off with um, depth and depth is what it, I feel like it's something that you either have it or you don't and it really can make or break your signature because depth is one of those things where it's like you want to see things like you see them in real life when you look at an object in real life you can tell where it is in perspective to other things so I feel like depth is something that it's it's all about perspective and where something is in perspective to something else and so there's a lot of ways to show depth, but um, the two main ways are to either blur something that's in the background or in the foreground. Um, blurring, you know, that shows distance. Or you can just show that something is in front of something else. And uh, that's kind of obvious. You just put one thing in front of another, and that kind of shows you depth right there. So, yeah. Um, a good example of this would be in real life. Uh, take your finger, um, put it out in front of you, and focus on your finger, and like focus your vision on your finger and the things around your finger like whatever background you might be looking at will get blurry and you'll lose detail there and if you slowly start to move your finger towards you and continue to focus on your finger you'll notice that eventually after a point your eyes will cross and then what your finger will become blurry and everything in the background becomes clear so that's kind of the effect you want to replicate in your signature is depending on how close or far something is you want to either blur it or sharpen it so yeah basic overview of depth right there the next thing is flow and flow is um it's the relation of the effects to the focal point everything that you do should have a, a flow it should have a direction and it should have a meaning and a lot a great way to you know demonstrate flow is smudge because smudge signatures are usually all about the flow and you know you can tell if something is a good smudge or a bad smudge depending on whether someone smudges in straight lines or if they do something kind of wacky and curvy and that's when you know people are like oh that smudge is so cool well that's because they didn't smudge on a straight line and yeah I know it's really hard I suck at smudge too so that doesn't mean I'm bashing on you if you do straight line smudging but yeah, so flow is the path across your signature that you want your viewer's eyes to follow. It's usually done to highlight good effects and it makes the signature look less cluttered and messy. So what you want your when you want someone to look at a signature, their eyes should be naturally drawn to something in the very beginning. And that's what their eyes are drawn to and it's the first thing you see. When you open your eyes and you see that signature, what's the first thing you see? 
And then from that first thing, then what's the second thing? What's the third thing? What's the fourth thing? And that direction, the direction that your eyes take, the path that you your eyes take when you look at something, that's the flow. So, yeah. All right, so the next thing is color. And this one's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, it's not... It's not too difficult to understand. Um, color is pretty much, it's really something that, it's its all like, it's based on preferences. You can't really say like, oh, that's a good color and that's a bad color, because everyone likes different colors. But in general, here are some tips um, for just, you know, doing colors in general. So, um, some tips for, what, how should I put this? Um, things that in general look pleasing to most people how about that um so here we um there are let's see four uh kind of color things you can have and to demonstrate i'm just going to pop a color wheel up here on the screen and so monochromatic are colors that are the same shade or tint variation of like it's the same color but it's just different shades so you know there's green and then there's dark green light green lime green, all the different shades of green, and if you just use different shades of green, then you have a monochromatic signature. And usually, when you do monochromatic, it's usually black and white plus another color. That's usually what people do, because having something that's all green looks pretty ugly, honestly. So the next thing is complementary. And complementary colors are any two colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. So just draw a straight line, what's the other color on the other side, and bang, that's it, that's your complementary color. All right. Um, and the next is analogous, and it, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Those are colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. So, for example, two colors that would be next to each other, uh, would be, they're not, like, the same, it's not monochromatic because they're not the same color, they're not the same hue, but they're right next to each other. So, blue and purple would be a good example of this. Um, and they just tend to look good together. And then the last one is triad. And a triad is really simple. Just take your color wheel, split it into three equal parts, and where those three lines are, bang, that's your triad. Those three lines right there. And you can move them around as much as you want. You can rotate it like a wheel. It's perfect. All right, so the last thing that we're going to be talking about today is lighting. And this is what I feel is, in my opinion, the most important thing out of these four aspects. Because without light, your eyes can't see. In real life, if you don't have... Light only behaves in one way. Um, there's no such thing as like an alternate reality where light behaves differently. Light is always the same no matter where you go. Shadows always work the same way. They're in the opposite direction as the light, and the object is in the middle, obviously. So, you know, lighting is just that one thing that if it's wrong, you can just tell right away. And if there's something, if you look at a signature and something's bothering you, check the lighting because that's most likely what it is. If something's bothering you and you just can't put your, your finger on it, it's probably the lighting. That's what I found to be most... I just feel it's so important because so many people don't do it right. Or so many people just leave it out, honestly. And so on the screen here, there's going to be a link to a great tutorial on DeviantArt about lighting. And um, I'm, I'm just going to put that graphic up there on the screen. And you guys can you know just pause the video right here and take a look at this. Look at it absorb it because it's really important and I'm not going to go through and explain everything about lighting but um, it's really simple light shadows shadows in the opposite direction as the light you know it's where the object casts a shadow and just some I'm sure you guys know but quick techniques for adding lighting of course take a soft brush big soft brush of any color that's on your signature just click once and put the layer mode to screen everybody knows that basic techniques guys that's not important but what we're here to talk about is when you should do that why you should do it blah 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 you know technic technical stuff that's what we're here to talk about all right so let's get started and uh so i'm just going to um jump into this tutorial right away and this is for my uh whoops that's cinema 4d never mind don't want that um all right now it's gonna have to open up but uh, let's just jump right into Photoshop here, and uh, yeah, we're just going to start by making the signature, and I'm going to gu guide you guys through my thought process and like uh, what I'm thinking when I do this. Let's close out Cinema 4D. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, all right. So um, just to start off, new canvas, and uh, if you watch the speed art, you probably noticed that I cropped my image just to kind of 
uh, make it follow the rule of thirds, which I'll explain that in a minute. But the dimensions for this, if you want to follow exactly, which I recommend you really don't do that. Oh, sorry. Height is 300, and the width is 627, or 630, you know, round it to whatever you want. But this is what I'm going to use. All right. And, um... All right. Um, so, yeah, uh... Yeah, so um, let's start off by dragging in our resources. Um, so I'm just going to go over here. I have them all in this folder, handy dandy, I know. And I'm just going to drag all of these bad boys in. There are links in the description for everything. You should be able to find everything in the description. Um, links to download all the packs and all the stuff. And um, yeah, the stock from the stock pack, it's stock number 49. And... The renders from Baka renders, and the bokeh effect is number 28 from the Media Militia pack. So, yeah, that's everything you need to have there. So, uh, I'm going to start off, whoops, just um, going to take my um, stock here, background stock, and this is the background stock that I used. It's nothing extremely fancy, it's just uh, some guy pedaling down a hill with the sky in the background. And it's fairly nice. I think it's good. Um, so how did I pick this stock out of the numerous stocks that I have? That is probably the question a lot of people are asking right now. Well, if you look at our wonderful render here. I need to make this a lot bigger. Oh, whoops. If you look at our wonderful render here, which is actually really, really high quality. Um, yeah, but if you look at this, you should see that there is light coming from behind her. Um, namely, like, on the right-hand side behind her arm, right here. And that's the part we want to focus on. Because we want the stock, the lighting on the stock, to match the lighting on the render, so everything looks like it flows smoothly. And this is what I was talking about, lighting and flow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so to get everything to flow smoothly, we want, um... We want this part of the render right here, where you can see like this faint sunset kind of thing going on. This sunset is where the light's going to be coming from, and it's going to be striking her back. So we also want her front to be darkened, um, because that's where the shadow would be. And as you can see, it, there's already a slight shadow there on the render, um, and the light's already coming from behind her. So we're all set to go. So I'm just going to resize this and place this on my... Uh, on my canvas here the way I want it placed. I want to get rid of that uh... yeah I like that okay um so yeah I like that placement right there um Okay, so now we just want to add some light to this stock, because as you can see, it's kind of like the colors are washed out right here, and it doesn't look like there's actually a sunset. It looks like the sun has already set, and it's really faint, the light from back here, but we want to increase it because, as you can tell by this render, there's a really bright light coming from behind her, and we want it to be really bright in the background as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, make that stock visible there, and just go to your um, color picker and pick a color from the render. Um, pick like an orange, like a dark orange. So I'm going to pick this orange color right here. Um, there's the hex code if you want to copy exactly what I have. Um, so yeah, and then I'm just going to take a big soft brush. Um, yeah, 60 pixels seems good. And I'm just going to make a new layer right on top of here. And I'm just going to take a big soft brush and just brush over this entire part right here. Because this is where I want that brighter light to be coming from. Right around there. Alright, and now I'm just going to lower the opacity. Lower it, lower it. Maybe add a little bit more. Ooh. And, uh, you know, if there's parts you don't like, you can always take your eraser tool and just erase away. No worries. Um. Yeah, so... The other thing that's kind of important when you're doing this is, notice how this black part is, this is like a shadow. So you don't want any of your light to be spilling over there. That's a shadow, there shouldn't be any light there. And it looks really weird when you do that. So just take your eraser, hard brush, I think I'm using 60 pixel, um, 
pixels on this eraser and just erase this part away because you don't want any light on those shadows and again this conveys a sense of depth the lighting does actually help with depth because uh, right now it looks like these these little branches things might be off in the background a little bit they might be a little farther off because the lights still hitting their shadows and it's not really hitting this hill as much all right so now I'm just gonna make our yeah that looks pretty good I like that I'm satisfied all right so and then the next thing we're gonna do is uh you know we d this stock it, it's nice but uh just want to adjust it a little bit and I want to make it a little bit brighter because like I said there's gonna be a really bright sun back here and um, that's gonna really brighten up the sky so we're gonna just gonna go to curves and add a new curves layer and right click it and then click create clipping mask so it only applies to this bottom layer and then I'm just gonna drag this up a little uh, you can always see what the auto does because Photoshop does auto correct and it's not bad it's not great either so I'm just gonna uh, no. Just play with it till you like it, you know. I like that. Uh, it's just a slight adjustment. It's not a lot, but I think it'll really make this whole signature stand out a lot more. You know, I just gave the sky that pop that it was lacking from the light that's going to come back here. All right, so now we want to create that. Um. You know, we want to create that light on top of this whole thing. So, um, I really, one thing that's always been my mantra when I'm making things in Photoshop is always use non-destructive methods of editing. Because if you, like, use the eraser tool and just, for example, rasterize this layer and erase all over it, and then you save your image, and then you close it and you come back to it, you can't undo anymore. And then you're kind of stuck because now you don't have part of that render and you have to start all over with anything you did to it. So I really prefer non-destructive methods. Um, and that really helps when you want to just undo something. Or let's say I wanted to get rid of this lighting right here in the background. I could just get rid of it by hitting that layer and it, it's gone. But yeah. So I think I'm going to lower the opacity of that just a little bit more here. All right. Yeah, okay, so now we want to create that light source in the background. So, um, you know, I'm sure you guys saw in the speeder, I used a lens flare. But the problem with the lens flare, um, you know, the lens flare thing, tool in Photoshop is when you do it, it goes right onto the layer, and then you can't get rid of it if you want to get rid of it. I don't like that. So, I have a handy-dandy trick to get around that. All you have to do, create a new layer, and fill that new layer with black. So just black. And then go to filter, render, lens flare. And I'm going to use a uh, 50 to 300 mm zoom and you know, place it right around where I want it to be. And again, it's kind of hard to be exact because you can't see the background because of the black. But you know, you can always do more than one try if you want and I'm gonna make it 125 percent brightness just hit OK and then, then change the blending mode to screen and bang you have a non-destructive lens flare that you can simply remove with the click of a button and I don't really like that actually so uh, I'm gonna move it down just a hair lens flare move it over just a bit and down yeah I like that better screen ah oh, perfect all right that's just what i wanted so now we've brightened up the sky we've added a really big light source behind her and you know i think this is still missing something something that's going to like just tie this all together and a lot of people may disagree with me on this simply because you know it's uh it's going to kill the detail of that background stock a little bit and those clouds are just so prettily made to whoever drew or painted that it's just such a great great job but we're going to have to destroy it just a little bit um so this is a smart object and whenever you're going to do a filter and a blur whenever you want to do a blur always 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 just make your layer into a smart object because then so 
uh, yeah, we're just going to explore this background, by the way, if I haven't said that already. And then you get this kind of smart filter, and you can just remove the blur if you don't want it. And that's, that's again, non-destructive, guys. If you just want to get rid of something, if you want to change up your signature just a little bit, if you take a break and come back after five minutes and look at it and you don't like it, you always want to be able to undo. So it's not that hard. Just right-click, convert to smart object, and then add your blur. Come on, you guys can do it. It's not that difficult. So, yeah, now we've blurred the background. Again, it kind of kills the quality of the clouds a little bit, but I'm willing to live with that because it's going to help us create depth, and it's going to help us blend this render into the background. So I'm sure you guys can see that right now if I zoom out, this render, it looks really, it looks kind of like it's not, like I just kind of slapped it on there. It doesn't really look blended with the background. So to achieve this, what we're going to do is we're going to apply the Gaussian Blur to... Um, which radius of 1 is what I used on uh, on here as well, by the way. So it's always just 1 pixel radius Gaussian Blur. And so what we want to do to this now is, obviously you don't want the entire render to be blurred, but you do want some of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a brush, and I'm going to be click on the clipping mask for the smart filter. Again, another advantage using the smart filter and using smart objects is that you have a clipping mask on all your filters, and you can just get rid of it. So I want to keep the detail of the render, but I want to blur the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a big, soft brush. Oh, I'm going to take a, uh, make it a little smaller. And I just want to restore the details of her jacket of her body of this, this really good part of the drawing you know where the details are but I want to leave the edges blurred so just make sure that you leave those edges blurred and we're gonna leave this hand completely unblurred because I think it's kinda like the focal point and especially back here because you know when light hits something and you have to squint to see it you know you kinda have to blur your eyes uh, it kind of makes something blurred because when you're squinting against a bright light, you can't see all too clearly. And it just kind of enhances the effect overall going for. Yeah, and of course, you don't want any blur on her face at all. Or her hair, really, honestly speaking. You know, make that pretty unblurry. Uh... Might do a little bit down here, I'm not sure. Nah. I'll just leave it. Alright, so yeah. So now I'm just gonna compare before and after. And it's a slight difference, you can't really tell too much. But it definitely does look more blended after you add the blur. Yeah, so after you add that, you know, you get rid of those black outlines on the edge as well. And it just looks more like she's actually standing behind that really, in front of that really bright light. Um, alright. So, the next thing we want to do is we want to add the, you know, the shadows on her face. Because they're not just nearly bright enough, no, or not nearly dark enough for such a bright light. You know, this is the sun right behind her, so she's got to have some major shadows on her face going on there. Um, yeah. So, to th there's two ways to add shadows, and there's advantages and disadvantages to both. And I'm going to go over both of them right now. So, one way to do it is to add a new layer, create a clipping mask, alright, and then take a dark blue color like that from the sky. Um, take your big soft brush, and, uh, you know, you have this as a clipping mask, so you can only draw on her face, and just add the shadows where they would be like like there just add them add them in kinda like that and then just lower the opacity of this layer until you're kinda satisfied with that that shadow so there's an advantage to this which is that it's non-destructive and you can always remove that shadow but there's also a disadvantage and I'm not sure if you can see it too well in the recording because YouTube always does weird stuff with the compression I'm gonna zoom in and if you look right here around her face you can see that it becomes kind of like the colors get washed out especially on her eyes and so this method while it does work and it is nice for non-destructive editing it does kind of ruin the color of your image so I wouldn't recommend it all the time um, but that being said 
you know, I'm just going to leave this layer here. Um, and I'm just going to hide it so you can't see it. And then I'm going to show you the other method. Um, so to be safe, I'm just going to duplicate this render. And I'm going to move it behind everything. All the way back there and hide it. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the burn dodge tool. Um, whoops, there we go. So yeah, I'm going to burn this image. So all you have to do is just, um, you know, get an appropriate brush size. Uh, whoops, it's a rasterized layer. So again, you have to rasterize it. You can't have a smart object when doing this. And what you want to do is just, you just want to go over where the shadow would be. And, you know, make it darker. Uh, whoops. It's just where that light is making a shadow. And just darken the image. And so this preserves the tones of your image. And it's really going to help bring out the colors. As you can see, in comparison to this, it didn't ruin the color nearly as much. Um, oops, still want to have that as a clipping mask. It really, it didn't ruin the color at all. But this is destructive to the render, and if you don't have a copy of that render, and you want to get rid of that shadow, then you're going to be in a bit of trouble. So, yeah, I would be cautious when using this method, but it definitely does turn out better. Always make a duplicate of your render if you're going to do this. But if you're not sure about your shadows, you can always just use that clipping mask method. It's quick, it's easy, and not everyone can tell that those colors are destroyed. Especially, you know, if you have a really light shadow, it does work. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to darken this up a little bit more. I'm going to take the highlights, and I'm just going to go over it. You know, just a tad. Uh, I actually don't like that at all. Hmm. Just to compare it. Well, it does look significantly darker and better. I'm not sure that I'm... I think it, I don't think it's intense enough. Uh, maybe I'll go to the shadows and just... Whoops. Ah, I guess I'll... Oh, pump up the exposure. That would be the trick. So, yeah, you might want to play with these settings. You know, it depends on the signature you're making. But I'm just going to really go at it with these, uh, these mid-tones and really darken them up. Because, like I said, this is a really bright kind of light going on. Ooh, I think that's too much. Alright, yeah, so I like that. I think that looks good. Um, yeah, and I guess if you really wanted, you could always go and take the dodge tool and maybe make those highlights back here a little, a little better. Uh, like, you know, make it a little brighter back there if you wanted. Uh, it's up to you. But yeah. Alright, so I think that looks fairly good, and let's compare it back again to that old render. So, as you can see, it just enhances that atmosphere so much more. It makes the lighting look so much more realistic when you add those shadows. And I just think overall, it really enhances the appeal of the signature. Alright, uh, so I'm going to move that render copy back, because we don't need any more. And I'm going to delete this clipping mask. Alright, so... Um, yeah, now one last thing we're going to do to this render here is we're just going to... I love my curves layers, guys. This is just my thing. It's I always like to do the curves, you know, how it goes. Uh, yeah, I actually don't think this needs any curves. I would, I, I would say that really play with it depending on how your lighting is. And if after you do the burn dodge, it still doesn't look exactly right you can always add a curves layer just create a clipping mask add a new curves layer on top and yeah so now we've done the lighting we've done the depth and 
um, you know, we have, let's see, lighting, depth, and the colors, you know, they kind of match, but we still need to kind of work on that, and we still need to work on the flow. So the flow of this signature, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but I'm just going to pop it up here to tell you the flow is really quick. Um, I'm going to use this orange color. Uh, actually, yuck. Uh, I'm going to just take, like, a green brush really quick. And I'm just going to make an arrow. This is the direction of the flow of the signature. All right, your eyes are naturally going to be drawn to the brighter part of the signature, which is the lens flare. So this is the focal point right here. And then your eyes are going to move upwards, you know, along her body and up to what she's looking at, which is this kind of like this hand gesture that she's doing. And then finally, you know, you're going to see this nice little bokeh thing that the uh, lens flare has made. Ah, uh, wow. My drawings are just beautiful. Um, so, yeah, um, that's the flow that we have going on so far. But we kind of want to enhance this this flow and we want to draw your eyes to this central central point like uh, right here I guess it would be your central point kinda of this this thing and then you know it just gets bigger and bigger and then that's where you keep looking and you know finally you look at the whole signature but so we want to draw attention to here so what we're gonna do is just gonna go to this little button down here we're gonna add a new adjustment layer and it's gonna be a gradient and um, before you do this, actually, make sure your colors are black and white. Ugh, bummer. Uh, Alright, make sure your colors are black and white, and then just go to the gradient, and change the style from linear to radial. And then change your angle, this is a pretty handy trick, to like 168, and then hit reverse. And when you do this, you get this nice little, um, kind of like a vignette thing around the whole signature and then just lower the opacity so this is like akin to darkening the edges a lot of people do this with the burn dodge tool I'm not really a fan of doing it with a burn dodge tool because I feel like it messes up the colors on the edge and I just like to make my vignettes you know with black and white and so lower this opacity a little and then click on this clipping mask here get a large brush very large about that size and again, you don't want to ruin the colors of that central part. As you can see, it really darkens it. Um, whoops. Yeah, you want to darken the edges, but not that central part. Let's just take a big black brush on that uh, on that layer mask, and then just click, 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 so that you can lighten the parts that you kind of want. And you can see that really does help by darkening the edges. But you know, we want to have that lens flare really bright. In fact, I, I probably wouldn't even darken this side at all. But, yeah, you can do that too. Oh, whoops. You know, you can have it on that side a little. And then, in fact, if you really want, you can always do the same thing. The gradient is just a handy trick to getting it really even. But if you want lighting only on one side, you can always take a big, soft, black brush on a new layer, and then, you know, just darken those edges a little bit. Yeah. Alright. I like that. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Um, so the next thing we want to do is uh, we're going to add this um, bokeh effect because I think right now, as it is, it looks kind of plain. So, you know, to add to this, just set this to screen and then we're just going to change up the angle on it, increase the size, you know, just place it where you think it looks good. It's kind of like this little lens effect and it, it makes this look like a real picture like someone took it with a camera you know um you just lower the opacity of those a little bit yeah and this also again it, it's helping with our flow because as you can see this um bokeh is in a it's in a v and uh if I take my 
handy dandy brush tool here with a black brush and I show you the flow of it it's kinda going like like that and that's really matching with our overall flow which is like that and um, so yeah it really helps adding to that flow and I think it's a nice touch it just gives an added effect and it looks it looks fairly good so yeah alright so now we're gonna do some final touches um, we're gonna add some text and uh, the text that I added on this I I'm not exactly too proud of it I don't think it was fantastic text but I was inspired by this picture I saw while lurking around the internet and it was this picture that said huge inspirational quote on a landscape and then the person who said that was famous smart person so you know I thought that was kind of funny and that's why th that, this signature the text on here was kind of my take on that um, and it was you know inspirational quote on a landscape uh -huh. I'm the famous smart person haha <laughs> get it yeah I know <laughs> pretty cheesy if you ask me but yeah that was kind of my take on that and um, so uh, the font that I used was rage italic and it should become default with um, Photoshop so you shouldn't have to download any fonts or anything and uh, I think I'll go over kind of like how I how I did this because with text it's either a hit or miss I mean there's text that looks good and there's text that looks bad and you really don't want text to distract from your focal point but eh, you know it happens sometimes you have some really cool meaningful thing that you wanna write on there make yourself sound like a really deep great artist I mean, come on arts all about giving your piece some fancy title and then pretending to be all deep and stuff but you know so yeah if you have a really cool quote or something you want to put on there and it's really long then what you can do to help increase the um, the blending of that text and how it all blends with the whole signature is use some typography um, mess with the sizes and stuff so or this one what I did is I made the words beauty fairly big and I'm gonna just make this white and I did different colors as well so I'm just gonna go over how I did that really quick uh, after I write this so beauty is one line and then make a new layer some text and then is in the that's how I broke it up and then that's what it was I I and then the last one was of of the beholder alright so now you have all these thingies and so what you want to do is take your beauty make it big this is going to vary you know based on what words you want to put but you know I'd say make it fairly large not that big a little smaller maybe like a uh, 25 All right, and then take your is in the and we're just gonna leave that at 15 and we're gonna place that underneath the beauty underneath that and then take the word I and uh, make this one 25 make it fairly large and we're just gonna place that underneath there and then the part where it says of the beholder we're gonna leave that at 15 and we're gonna place it so that the loop of the Y is kind of like in between the like this kind of like indented part and I guess you can see and uh, yeah and so now we're just gonna take all of this text and I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger I'm gonna place it underneath here kinda like in this in this nook right here underneath your arm and now we're gonna pick a different color for everything so for this uh, for beauty um, it's on a kind of like a light background so we're gonna pick a dark color and uh, it's just gonna be kinda like something from here you know I pick colors that are already in your signature guys that's a great way to not have to worry about the color wheel because if it's already in your signature then who cares yay you know the colors already fit they're already there <laughs> so yeah uh, okay and then for the is in the I'm going to pick uh, kinda like a purple except darker Kind of like this dark 
purple shade from her uh, bikini right there. And then, for the word I, we're going to pick another blue, lighter blue this time. I, and then for the last part, let's do this kind of washed out blue. Alright, so now we've placed our text in a manner where it looks appealing to read. The font sizes are varied. Uh, I still don't like where this is really. I think maybe this needs to be a little bit bigger. I think that's better. Alright, so now we're just going to take all four of these layers and move this just a little bit more inwards. And I just lowered the opacity. So this was kind of like in the style of the image that I saw. It was kind of like white, big, bold white text with lowered opacity. And it kind of looked something like that. Uh, oh, this eye. I don't like that. That color. Yeah, maybe something like that. Cool. So, yeah, we don't want this text to really distract. That's why we've lowered the opacity. And uh, I've lowered it to 75 on all these layers. You know, I think you might even be able to get away with 70, make it even lower. Because we don't want it to detract from that signature. But we do want it to... We do want it to be readable, but we don't want it to take away. Um... Yeah, okay, so the very last thing we're going to do here is, on top of all of this, we're just going to create a new adjustment layer. And we're going to put a photo filter, a warming filter, to be precise. And this is really going to fix our color. So, warming filter 85, it should be the default selected, and just make it 30%. Bingo. There you go. And that should give you this kind of like vintage washed out look. And uh, it should help to blend all the colors together. Um, hmm. Face is still looking kind of weird to me. Uh, I wonder why that is. Let's see if we can fix that. Maybe try and give her more of a washed out look on her face. Uh... Try and wash out these colors a little bit. Let's see if that helps. looks better. I thought her face was a little too bright. I don't know. That kind of helps give it a little bit more of that washed out look. And, well, we do have one more problem, though. If you look closely at the signature, you can see that we have this kind of black outline, and I really don't like that. So, to remedy this, it's actually really easy, guys. All you have to do is um, click your render. Actually, let's get rid of that that color layer. But click your render, hit control and click on the thumbnail here and that will make a selection. Alright, um, duplicate this render really quick just to be safe. Alright, now take this, um, make that selection and go to filter, or sorry, select, modify and click contract, contract it by one pixel and then hit control shift I to inverse that selection, hit the delete key 
and uh, bang, that one pixel black outline is gone from her fingers. But if you notice, we also kind of ruined her hair. So that's what this second layer is for. Handy dandy, I know. And just hit the layer mask. Whoops. Hit the layer mask on here. And um, then take your black brush and uh, brush over her hand because we don't want this render to show where we don't want the like, overlay render to show where her face is and so we just get rid of that outline where we don't want the outline I got rid of it from all of these places and we just leave it for her hair because we want her hair to be intact alright there we go so you know you can see that it really does make a difference on her hair a lot because you know the selection in Photoshop doesn't realize it when it does one pixel it does it arbitrarily and that hair is really thin so we don't want to ruin it all right guys so yeah that's it um, I think the very last thing you might want to do is just go here curves auto the curves a little Yeah, final curves adjustment, you know, maybe a little bit of color correction or something if you want to do that in there, and then you're done. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, you could do something to make this just a little, you know, I'm just kind of adding this as I go. I'm not really, I'm not really, I already finished what I was planning to show you for the tutorial, but um, I think if you want to add to this a little bit, you could select the color let's see maybe select like an orange color whoops go to the render select an orangish color then go down here to the stock and select like a bluish color I think we need to make this a um, little bit more of a washed out orange. Yeah, so now you have these two kind of washed out orange and blue. And then just go to the very top of your image. Um, you know, make a new... Whoops. Go to the very top layer. Make a new gradient map. And uh, reverse it so that you have this kind of orange to blue thing going. Yeah. And then just lower the, the opacity of that a lot. In fact, you might even want to set the blend mode to something. You can experiment with this. You know, I'm just experimenting right now. Maybe set it to overlay, increase that opacity. Oh, just the slightest. Yeah, I really like that. Alright, guys, so that's it for this tutorial. I just want to throw out some final thoughts out there. Again, happy holidays to everyone. Thank you to all the people I already mentioned. And go down there in the description and check out all those cool, um... Check out all those cool, uh, links we have down there. Um... And, um, yeah, I also want to announce one last thing, is that, if you would, please, I, I, I always want to, um, see what you guys have made and what you guys learn from these kind of tutorials, so if you would, please, post a comment containing, A, something that you learned, or a link to an image with a technique that you used from this tutorial, or you can just write something you learned, you don't have to actually make a signature, either one of those is fine, and... Um, see, a critique for me. How can I make my tutorials better? What have I done good? What have I not explained so well? What would you like me to not do? Um, etc, etc. Um, that's always really appreciated. So, yeah, post a comment down there, and I'm gonna try and see if I can maybe have some kind of, uh, random drawing for a prize or something. I don't know. I have to see what I can do. But, uh, maybe it'll be... 
I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'll see what I can do. But, yeah, so post a comment down there, and then I'm going to try and... Uh, ooh. I'm going to try and, um, you know, just uh, see what I can do about maybe making some kind of prize or a giveaway or drawing. But, so, yeah, if you want to be entered in that, just post a comment with something that you learned or having a signature that, or like a link to an image, because YouTube gives you permission to post links now. So, you know, a link to an image with a signature of something that you learned. Don't worry, I'm not going to judge your, your art. It's okay if it's bad, as long as you learn something. And, uh, yeah, just some critique from me. And uh, thank you guys so much. Be sure to like, um, favorite, and subscribe. Fireclaw, over and out.